Hi, I'm Suzanne from Rhythm Harmony with a short video for you just to introduce the joys of the happy drum. This isn't a sales video. I don't sell these drums myself. I've had mine for many years and every time I take it out and about and play it, somebody who was with me in the crowd or the drum circle at the time seems to end up buying one for themselves. They're so popular. Very often when they get their drum, they're not quite sure what to do with it. So this is a little video to tell you how I enjoy using mine. A happy drum has a lovely tone to it, very soothing and gentle. And you can think of this as being a musical instrument, but also a mindful meditative tool. Happy, H-A-P-I, is actually a brand name. So this type of drum is a tank drum or a tongue drum. They also come by other names as well. Tongue drum because they have got different shaped tongues cut out of them. Um, and each different one is like a different note, a different sound. You see they vary in size. The bigger the tongue, the lower the sound is going to be, the lower the tone. And the smaller the tongue, it's going to have a much higher sound to it. Tank drums, by their nature, are quite heavy. They are made of metal, quite a thick metal as well. You can see there's that hole in the bottom there. It's a rather pretty shape on this one. And on the top, is where you play the notes, also a hole in the top, so the sound comes out from all around the drum. This particular happy drum is a C major pentatonic, and it comes as the drum and two little mallets. So you can play these drums with your fingers, it's kind of a flicking type action that you would want to make the different notes. They're kind of intended, these particular ones, to be played with the mallets and that's what I prefer to, how I prefer to play mine. You'll notice we have eight different tongues, eight different notes. Four larger ones at each side, um, well top and bottom on each side, I think of it as being 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock. And we're just going to start with those to begin with, um, the smaller higher notes in between We'll hang on to those just for now. So to play your drum, you can just perch it on your lap. Obviously you need quite a nice level lap to do that. So you don't want to be sitting on a chair that's too high. Um, another really nice way to play a happy drum is to sit on the floor and play it. Because the sound comes out the top and the bottom, it doesn't muffle it. And actually if you sit on a wooden floor, they sound particularly lovely and you also really benefit from feeling the vibration of the sound. So these are the beaters that are supplied with the happy drum. I find them quite small, they're quite short. I kind of suppose it just depends on, you know, it's personal choice really, what you prefer and what you don't. But I actually, and don't ask me what they are or where they came from, I don't know, I got these many years ago. I actually changed mine for, or added on, some longer beaters. And I just find it's a little bit more comfortable. I'm less hunched over the drum. So when you play any kind of drum um, on your lap or like with any djembe type drum, that's always our big risk that we will end up hunched over the drum, which is really such a poor, poor position for us to be in. Not good for us physically, energetically, any of that. We want to be sat nice and upright. Imagine somebody's pulling a string, an imaginary string on the top of your head there, pulling your spine up straight, shoulders back, nice and comfortable. For me, I find having slightly longer mallets makes a big difference to my posture. So when we play our happy drum, rhythm is going to be our um, key focus. It's a drum after all. And there are so many benefits to um, to us playing rhythm, us being in amongst rhythm, us feeling rhythm, that's for another day. Um, rhythm obviously is a key thing, but then you've also got the melodic side of playing these drums, because they really are very beautiful tones, very melodic drums. So with a pentatonic scale, it means we haven't got the full do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. We've got some of those notes, but not all of them. 
called a pentatonic scale. So whatever combination you play is going to sound lovely. In other words, there are no wrong notes. You don't need any previous musical knowledge in the traditional Western sense of learning music theory, etc. Sense of rhythm is a good thing, but you know, the more you play any drum or anything, the more you develop that. This um, drum for me is very much about enjoying the sound and getting creative. I'm going to switch to an overhead camera now so that you can get a good view of the drum rather than me. One of the important things is to get yourself comfortable before you start um, playing your happy drum. And hopefully I can show you a few ideas to get you started and um, you can play along with me. So we're aiming to um, make contact with our tongues, with our mallets, with a, with a nice bounce. You find you kind of need to put a little bit of, a little tiny bit of oomph into it, but we're basically bouncing off this drum. We don't want to bash it and strike it too hard. And we're aiming to hit, or to make contact, I should say, I don't really like using the word hit, hit with a drum, um, round about here on our tongues. So near to the top half, but not right on that top. You're not going to get the sound you want by playing um, in the gap or on the gap. You need to be playing on the tongue of the drum, round about here. You don't want to be playing down here. It's towards the centre. can take a little bit of practice. I think I'm sometimes playing a little bit offline because I've got this camera kind of stuck under my nose here. But that's what I'm aiming for. That's what I'm intending to do. Don't get too hung up on technique. I mean, you know, it's it's nice to get the best sound out of your drum, but that comes the more you play. It just kind of naturally happens anyway. So we're just going to look first at the four larger um, tongues on here, which have a deeper tone. So if you play each of your tongues, you will notice that one is the lowest of the four and they go up in order obviously and then you get a higher one. So I put the lowest facing me here. Then I will know that if I go right, left, right, left, I'm going up the scale. So it's not really a question of whether or not you're left or right handed, I wouldn't worry about that. We're um, you know, drumming with both hands as equally as possible actually. Um, often referred to as flow drumming, which I really like, is when you are using your hands alternately and you can apply that same principle to the happy drum as much as you wish. We tend to be um, far too dependent on one of our hands normally. We all have a a dominant hand, for me it's my right hand, so it's good to get my left hand working. Balances the body, balances the brain. So, thinking left and right, if you identify which is your lowest of these four large tongues and put that one facing you, closest to you, and you'll find then you can go right, left, right, left, and you'll be going up a scale, do, 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 do. So that in itself is just a, like a really, really good thing for us to play. When we are playing and hearing sounds go up in their tone, um, that's very uplifting for us, you know, it can literally lift our spirits, lift us out of a rut. Um, I often talk about intentional drumming. Again, that's kind of a different video really, um, but drumming with meaning and with intention, with a purpose, a spiritual or a, a mental or emotional purpose is a really good thing to do. So if you acknowledge the feel of that, the rising um, going on there of the tones and you allow that feeling into your body to rise up through your belly, through your chest, out through the top of your head, literally lifting your spirits. So I'm just going to play some one, two, three, four, right, left, right, left. So you may wish to play along with me. And you'll notice I am keeping um, a beat going here. There's a pulse going on.
probably sit and play that for, I don't know because I don't really time it, but several minutes at least until I kind of felt like it had done its work or just that I'd had enough of playing that and want to change to something else. But I really do look upon this as a real um, meditative practice as well as music making. The music making is kind of the bonus in it for me. So you can, of course, come back the other way. So you can start at the top with your left hand, then right hand, left, right. So you'll hear you're coming back down. Do, 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 do. Not that at all, because I don't know why I sang those notes, but you get the idea what I mean. You're coming down the scale. So when we play and the tones are coming down, it's very grounding. Again, grounding is a whole new subject, really, a whole different subject. But basically, when we are feeling um, mentally or um, emotionally overactive, what we would often call in a tizzy, a little bit chaotic, or we're just too floaty, too dreamy, we're not feeling anchored, what we need is to be grounded, to ground our energy, ground our thoughts, our mind, help us make rational decisions, and see our situation, whatever that may be, from a rational viewpoint. That's what grounding is for. So this for me is very, very calming. And I'm doing the same as I did before, but the other way around. So I'm starting at the top with my left, right, left, right. In the same simple, nice one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So if you would like to play with me, I'm going to begin. One, two, three, four. Left, right, left, right. you can combine those to go up and go back down which gives a lovely feeling of soothing waves I suppose you could compare it to very very balancing to play in this way so I would go right left right left left right left right taking me up and back down again so I'm playing in a count of eight one two three four, five, six, seven, eight. Bottom, left, right, top, top, right, left, bottom. Join me if you wish. Here we go. So now we'll look at these smaller tongues, the tongues that are on the diagonal. And again, if we play right, left, right, left, starting closest to us and moving away, we will be playing up the scale. And we go left, right, left, right, we can come back down. So you could apply exactly the same technique as we were doing 
for the um, uplifting and the grounding and the balancing ways of playing, but you could use these instead, the higher notes, or you could get very clever and go up with one foot and down with another. Now, so far we've used the, the larger notes and the smaller notes separately, but of course you can experiment and combine them. And this is very, very much about getting creative, playing patterns. It really, really is just making patterns on your drum. It's quite a, an artistic um, thing to do, really. A little bit of you, same as if you sat down and drew a mandala pattern or one of those loopy line patterns. That's what you want to do is just get absorbed in the pattern making and you've got the amazing adding, added bonus of the sound that you're producing on this drum. So you can just, to begin with, just keep it really simple and saying just take these bottom four and play a pattern and make a little tune. And it can be a repeating pattern like you would do on any drum. So I'm going to go one, two, three and four, one, two, three and Of course, you can apply that same principle to any of the notes that you wish. You can choose two of them, four of them, all of them, if you want to, um, and just get a rhythm going or start out very simple. Just get a pulse going, then create a rhythm and just keep repeating that pattern. You might then find that you want to go a step further and play two notes together. Now you can actually play any two together and they will sound good. There's no such thing as a discordant um, double beat on these. However, there will be some that you prefer and you don't. So really that's for you to explore your drum and you will get to know um, which combinations you particularly like. And actually that might be different ones on different days and in different moods and circumstances, but explore your drum. You know, you can't possibly do anything wrong. The world is not going to come crashing down because you play a duff note, which you won't, on your happy drum. So explore it and enjoy it. But you can get your uh, notes together. You can make little phrases so maybe I would do um, like a kind of a count of three of one little set of rhythms and then put something else in every um, fourth measure. really explore and get a little bit creative. I'm just giving you some very kind of um, basic ideas for guidance, but you 
make your playing your own playing and whatever comes to you you know use your intuition different days it will be very different as well though you might have certain favorite things that you always return to on your happy drum so how can we put our happy drum into a drum circle because they do make a great addition to a drum circle so I'm going to get some beats on and some drums and I'm going to show you how I simply pick up a rhythm and I freestyle it pattern making on my happy drum. So I'm picking up the pulse of what's going on here with this playing. I can hear the tambourines going. The pulse is a key thing when you're playing in drumming. You want to pick up on that one, two, three, four. This is the bit you would dance to tap your foot. In fact, it's a good idea to really put this on your body first. You can clap along. That's usually the best way to get in the pulse of something. You need to find it sometimes. So we can feel that. So I can begin on my drum. One. Chopping and changing there, a real variety of different patterns, using different notes, slightly changing my rhythm, but all the time keeping to that same pulse. 
and that was nice simple drumming but a simple tambourine so it kind of felt quite good to um, put the excitement in there if you like put the real texture and the real interest using the happy drum there might be other times where the drumming is all a lot more complex going on and I would just want to keep it much simpler and stick to the same thing again just you know get a feel and have a listen to what are you actually bringing to the drumming to that drum circle and um, don't be afraid to change as the groove goes on either For me, without a doubt, this is definitely one of the best um, personal meditative tools ever. Um, I don't need anything with it other than the drum and two mallets. It's not too loud, so it doesn't disturb anybody else. Um, I just absolutely love the sound. If you um, enjoy singing using your voice, it's also great to do that with. Uh, again, that's kind of something in front of the video. Um, and it is all about pattern making and you can keep it as simple as you like. You can use two of your notes, pick out the two that are sounding good to you, that are resonating with your energy on that particular day. You can go around the clock, as you might have seen that I, I did during the um, drum along that we did there. Or you can just keep making the same pattern, but on different notes or the same rhythm rather, but on different notes. Um, you can vary your rhythm. But really, you to play these, you don't need any massive skill. This video is just intended as a starter to get you going. You just need to spend a bit of time with your drum, um, enjoying it, enjoying the sound of it, enjoying the feel of it, and trusting in the fact that your playing will come. There is no right and wrong. There's no standard you must meet. You are playing purely for your own enjoyment and then if you wish to take it out and about with you and play it in a drum circle, you will be playing for other people's enjoyment as well, which is rather lovely. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope it's inspired you to play your drum more. It's a great drum for playing in drum circles, adds in that you know really lovely bit of melody and it cuts through the drums as well so it, it can be heard really nicely and it's a great drum to play just yourself as i said it's a real you know meditative tool a mindful um, practice and you are getting that sound vibration a form of vibrational healing <laughs>